Hi. I just want to make sure everyone can hear me. Hello. Hi. Let me unmute you. Okay, perfect. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Great. Excellent. So people are starting to come on. I am going to start to push the live and then I will go through the formalities, but hi, Drea. <laughs> hi, Roxanne. I see you on here. Mary, Lisa, Layla, CJ. Let us know a little about a bit of, look, sorry. Let us know a little bit about you. Where are you from? Andrea, you can see the chat box, correct? You should be able to see everything I see. I am going to open the chat box. Yes, I do see the chat box. Excellent. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so I'm just sharing the video right now uh, on our private Facebook group. I will be watching that group for any questions or comments as well. Okay. But we are at 7.59 and I think this is great timing. Just give me a couple of minutes just to get it started. And it will be a go. All right, there's about to be a slight echo once this starts and then I'll shut out of it and we can go from there. Perfect. Okay. We are good to go. Excellent. So I see, hi Layla, you're from Ottawa. Huh. We'll be in Ottawa in September. So hopefully we can get to meet face to face because we have an event there on September 30th. Uh, so enough about all that. Let's do some formal introductions. I'm Duania. For those of you who don't know me, I am the founder of Canadian Small Business Woman. And we have these webinars what I thought I was going to only have them once per month, but we have had such a demand that we're having them twice per month. And they're always available for rewatching on our YouTube page, but that's enough about me. Now, I really feel great to introduce our webinar host today because I have known, how long have we known each other, Andrea? Probably like <laughs> over 20 years for sure. <laughs> over 20 years, definitely. Yeah, we go way back. I'm talking high school way back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I became great friends in high school in Brooklyn, and the rest has been history. Indeed. Uh, you should tell them about that picture that pops up on Facebook memories all the time. We had on the same outfit with our legs mm -hmm. crossed, all cute. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we were part of a youth and government program in high school, and we used to go to uh, Albany to debate bills that we essentially wrote, <laughs> and we had a year where we were just twinning it for the entire... <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> yeah, and it is a great picture that pops up in our memories of, of both of us just looking ever so cute. We look the same, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> 20 years, no aging. But oh, hi, Miriam from Markham. Hi, Miriam. So I would like to just get the ball rolling. I'll have, I will share my screen so that you can see Dre's presentation and you can tell everyone a little bit more about you and what you are going to share with us. Awesome, awesome. 
And hi again, everybody. I'm really excited to see you guys on. You guys are bright and early, so you get to hear all the shenanigans in the beginning, <laughs> which is which is perfectly fine. Um, but like Dwayne said, we have been friends for a really long time, and I'm definitely going to share a little bit about me. But before I do that, I want to remind you guys what we're talking about today, which is about how to grow and profit in your business with ease. So this is really about avoiding the three massive mistakes that I say female entrepreneurs make that keep their businesses from growing and the money from flowing. So you guys all know if you're on this webinar right now, you know, you may have been in business for a few years, you may have been in business for a few months, but there becomes a ceiling that we tend to reach at a certain time where our businesses feel like they are stagnant. And we want to make sure that we're avoiding the mistakes that people make that keep us kind of stuck right where we are. So tonight, what I want to share with you guys are those three mistakes. And I'm going to share with you also how to um, avoid those mistakes and not really stay on a merry-go-round that we tend to stay on when we get stuck in, in one spot. So um, who am I? Well, all of these pictures are a demonstration of, of who I am. I am the CEO and founder of the Power Players Club, which is the premier coaching and empowerment club for forward-thinking urban adults like us who are powerfully and consciously creating our lives from a place of power and not just kind of getting the results that we always get um, as opposed to actually creating the results that we want in our lives. So that's a picture um, in the bottom uh, left-hand corner, right-hand corner uh, of some of the people who have come to one of our live events in the past. Uh, that was our Empower You. Empower University, I should say, that was teaching us how to empower our lives. Instead of just chemistry and biology that you learn in regular college, this was a university for learning how to empower you in your life. So that's um, my baby. That's my project. There, you know, I'm a speaker, I'm a trainer, and also I'm a mommy of this cute little guy here in the middle. He's my only child. He is 12 years old right now. And he's a very happy and exciting boy. Uh, so he keeps me on my toes. He's homeschooled right now. So I am also a homeschool mommy. Uh, so all of that is important to um, why this topic is important to me to share with you. And I hope that you guys get something out of this while we're doing it. So go ahead, doing that. Okay, so like I said, Today we're gonna to learn, you can, you can just tap them, they're gonna come up pretty quick. Um, but like I said, we're gonna learn the top three mistakes that, that female entrepreneurs make that stagnate their business. Um, I'm gonna teach you how to avoid those mistakes and I'm gonna give you some easy to follow practical strategies that you can use right away to get your business moving quickly and with more ease than ever before. Cause Lord knows we all love to do things with ease especially if um some of you guys are still in a nine to five job as well as growing your business we don't need anything that's hard to do okay we need things that are going to be easy for us to implement and easily get us results so let's get started okay so i'm going to go in descending order okay um, so hopefully you guys have something to write with and write these things down because I really feel like when we write things down, we tend to make them a real thing, right? Like we don't just have ideas floating around in our head. When you write it down, you can see it, you can go back to it and refer to it later and really use it to empower your business. So here's mistake number three. This is the first, this is really the, the first mistake, right? The, which is shiny object syndrome. And I call that SOS, like save me, right? Um, because a lot of us have this syndrome and you know what it looks like. And the definition of it would be bouncing around from idea to idea 
without powerfully choosing, okay? And the choosing part is the important part, but let's look at how, what this looks like in our business. So it shows up as a extreme indecisiveness. And it could be in how you price your products or services. A lot of us know what that's like. Oh, I think I'm gonna charge $147. No, maybe I'll charge $245. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna stick with 47. No, nope, I'm gonna stick with, with 245 because I heard that such and such did a great job with that price. And now I wanna do the same thing, so I'm gonna charge that. Oh, no, I'm back to $45. We, we do it all the time, right? But that's how it sounds, right? We could be indecisive, indecisive about the number of clients we want to serve, whether we want to serve 100 clients or we just want to serve 10 clients. It, the list goes on. Um, you could be indecisive about who you want to work with specifically and how much money you want to make for the year and constant reinvention of your business idea itself. I cannot tell you how many people I know and have come across in my work that every, I, don't, I can't even say every year, every few months, they have a new business. I kid you not. And okay, I'm not making fun of you. If you are one of those people, it is okay. But I want you to understand that that is a symptom of the shiny object syndrome, okay? Because if you know better, you can do better, right? So that's what it looks like in extreme indecisiveness in any of these areas. So it also can show up, and this is, this is from the, the other perspective of how you, how you move in your business, right? So a lot of us jump from product to product or coach to coach. So you're constantly spending money on different products and services and different coaches and then not following through with anything, right? So of course it's okay to invest in your business and invest in services and even invest in coaches who are there to help you to move to the next level in your business and your life. But if you are constantly finding yourself buying all of these things and then not actually implementing anything that you purchased, then what are you really doing, right? That's really what that comes down to. And it, it feels like a feeling that there's always something better out there, right? So then you don't commit to what you already have and you find yourself back at square one all the time with no movement at all, right? It's almost like you just keep your, yourself stuck in student mode. Right. So you're constantly, you know, buying things to learn from instead of implementing what you what's already in front of you. OK. Also, media mayhem. I call it mayhem because it can be mayhem. And you know what I mean? Constantly checking email, checking Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, TV and games. All those things that can take away your focus from what it is that you are trying to create in your business. Okay. And then family feud, right? Your other life obligations. They also take away your focus, your family, your job, your kids and your chores, right? And you become what I call Debbie do it all, right? And that's very, that easily shows up for most of us as women who are entrepreneurs. Those things are important to us. So of course they have their place, but what ends up happening is that we allow them to be the reason why we don't move forward in our business. You know, my family needs me. I got to take my kids here. I have my job too. I still have to clean the house, right? And then you look up and you're tired it's the next day and you haven't done anything to move your business forward, okay? So all of that is shiny object syndrome. You can imagine that most of us are suffering from that particular um, syndrome. <clears throat> so you can continue. I know I, I make all of these little funny little, little people here. So just continue. <laughs> okay. So the symptoms that we just discussed are really, well, the symptom is unclear focus, right? And that's really what we need to talk about. So the only reason why we end up with shiny object sy syndrome is because we have not created a clear focus, 
Okay, you can continue. So one of the principles that I teach in the Power Players Club, and there are five of them, um, is opening up to clear and active communication, all right? Which really means, and, and what should be running in the background for you is that you will continue to expand what you don't want and repeat the cycle over and over again, right? Because what you focus on expands, okay? So that's really what the point of that particular principle is. What you focus on expands. So you wanna be clear and making sure that what you focus on, what you want your focus on, is what's actually happening out of your mouth, is happening in your actions, is happening on all facets of, of who you are and who you're being, right? Because if you're on one hand saying that, you know, I wanna be a successful entrepreneur, I wanna leave my job this year, right? Or if you're a full-time entrepreneur and you're saying, I wanna to move to the next level in my business this year, but you are constantly in a state of, of unfocus and not allow, and allowing all those other things to be in the forefront, then you're gonna get a lot more of those other things that are now blocking you from moving forward in your business. And even in, in other areas of your life, right? But today we're talking about your business, but this is how it works. This is how it is all the time. What you focus on expands. Right. So if you want different results in your business, you have to make a commitment to focus on what you actually want and then align your thoughts, align your actions. Right. And everything that goes with it in that direction. OK, so the example that I'm using right now is is the money trap. Right. Because most of us understand what that means, right? The money trap. We always say, okay, let's just pick an example of, of an amount of money. I want to make $100,000 in my business, right? I want to make $100,000. So now you have a goal of making $100,000, but in the next sentence, right after you say that, you're, you're talking about how much money you don't have, how you can't go and do whatever it is that you wanted to do this weekend because you just don't have money right? You got to wait till you get paid because you're just strapped, right? Those, those words and those, the way that you are speaking is indicative of what you're really focused on, right? So you have to be really clear. And that's why we're saying open up to clear and active communication. You have to pay attention to what you're allowing to come out of your mouth. Listen to what, what you're saying out of your mouth, right? Because really at the end of the day, there's nothing that can come out of you that's not already there. So you think of it as a, like a computer, so to speak, right? If you're typing in a computer and you're, you're writing a report, let's say, when you print out the report, the report is going to print out exactly the way you wrote it, right? Nothing different than that, right? And so the same thing is with what comes out of your mouth. What's coming out of there is like the printer, what's coming out of the printer. So when you listen to the things that are coming out of your mouth, you can hear what you really programmed inside of your brain, what you typed into your psyche, right? So listen to that, right? So that you can start to clean up your language and start to clean up your thoughts so that they match with that $100,000 goal. Because if they don't match, I guarantee you, you may never reach that goal, okay? So really pay attention to that. It's, it's super important, okay? It's so of speaking with intent. Yes, absolutely. Speaking, speaking with intent. Okay. And more so just really focusing on what, what you already have in there, because if you are not aware of what you're actually already putting out into the world, into the universe, then it's going to be very hard for you to be that intentional, right? Because the way everybody thinks they're being intentional when they say, I want to make $100,000 a year, right? But if you're not focusing on, oh, let me pay attention to my, what I really think about money. You know, what, what are my real thoughts about money, right? You never get it. That's the part that is the trick. And that's why it's such a slippery slope. And that's why this is a mistake that most 
most entrepreneurs, not even just female entrepreneurs, but us in particular, because we have so many other things that are important to us that we need to, that become our excuse, you can go right over it. You think that you're speaking with intention when you're saying, I will make $100,000 this year. I am a, you know, I am a millionaire. You know, we all learn to do that and say those mantras, but then we don't go back and do the work to clean up what's already there. Because like I said, if you don't reprogram that computer, that's still what's going to print out. It don't matter if you, if you say that. You're going to be walking, walking around with bills up, up the gazoo talking about I'm a millionaire. That's what's still going to be happening, right? You're going to be wondering why you're not a millionaire yet. Right. So yes, I agree. Speaking with intent, but definitely working on cleaning up what's already in the space. Okay. So what do you need to focus on? Okay. One, focus on the specific elements of your business. Right. So this is one of those places where we tend to get tripped up. And a lot of that comes from not, not feeling like you're worthy in your business, right? You can have how many of a client you want. You can have the income that you want, right? But again, aligning your thoughts, the way you think about yourself too, right? Your thoughts and your words together, right? To create that. So really focus, write it down. Like how many clients do you really ideally want to serve? That is super important. What is going to get you to your income? And I invite you, by the way, to do it in that order. Find out what the income goal is first. How much do you want to make? So even if it's a monthly goal, if you say, I want to make $10,000 a month, right? If you want to make $10,000 a month and then you figure out, well, how, what am I going to charge for the service that I'm providing, a, a specific and legitimate number, and stick to it, right? Because we just talked about going back and forth forever right? And then how many clients is it going to, is it going to take you to reach that goal, right? So we call that um, reverse engineering, right? So that just means that you start from what your big goal is, and then you, you break it down. Well, how am I going to get to that goal? Not the other way around, because that just doesn't work as well. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I will never say it doesn't work. I'm sure it works for some people. It just doesn't work as well as figuring out what it is that you want. So in this case, what I would really recommend, especially for those that do get turned around with how much money they want to make, how much money you even believe you can make, I would say, one, if you are a nine to fiver, the first thing I will focus on is either, you could do it one of two ways, either focus on how much you need to make in order to replace your job income if your goal is to leave your job. And if your goal is not to leave your job or not to leave your job yet and you're just starting, you just want to, you know, you're just getting into business, you can just set a clear goal that you think is doable for you and that's okay for right now, right? But if you are a person who really wants to replace your job income, that can be your first goal. So if you make 75000 a year right now, you know you can't leave your job until your business is making 75000 consistently, at least, right? Because that's what already is the, is the level of your comfort. And we don't want you having to reconfigure life just because you want to be an entrepreneur. That's not fair, right? 75000 is very doable, but you have to stick to it. And believe that that's something that you can achieve. And like I said, you work backwards from there. Then focus your attention on what you really want, right? What do you want in your, in your life? What's the lifestyle that you want to live? How much money are you going to need in order to do that, right? Really pay close attention to that, right? Like, for instance, I know for me, I am literally in the middle of changing my, my business model because... For the last five or six years, I would say, I had a business model that it worked when it wanted to work, right? You know, as a trainer, as, as a coach and um, a consultant, you know, when you go into people's businesses, you get paid that way. And I said, I don't want that because I want something that's going to be very sturdy and very stable. So I'm moving to a membership model um, in both areas of my business. Right. So all those things come up when you start to realize what kind of lifestyle you want. 
I'd rather have the stability and not have to travel to everybody's school or everybody's business all the time just to make that money. I don't want to do that. I want to do exactly what I'm doing with you right now and still make a healthy living. So think about that. What is it that you really want? Um, and then, as I said before, focus on your thoughts, your words, and your actions. They have to be in alignment, okay? And that's how you create a powerful intention, which is what Delenia was um, alluding to earlier. That's how you create a powerful intention. When you focus on aligning all three of those things, thoughts, words, and actions, right? If you are saying that you want to make $100,000 in your business, then you need to start speaking like somebody who makes $100,000 in their business, right? You don't say you can't afford things, right? You don't call things a cost, and especially if it's related to your business, it is an investment, right? And you work on your thoughts constantly so that they match. And then that way you are far more likely, far more likely to reach those goals than you would if you leave it as it is right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so this is Amada. Amada is one of the power players, and she's actually been one of the power players for ever, like since we started in 2010. So she's awesome. And, you know, she said, basically, I won't read that, but you can read it yourself. But pretty much, you know, she wanted to have a business. She wanted to get her business off the ground. And she was allowing other people to be the reason why she wasn't doing what she wanted to do. So after we worked together for a while, like she said, she started to say no to things that wouldn't advance her business. And she got her business, her tour guide business off the ground. I'm super proud of her. Um, she did this a few years ago, actually, and she's still going strong with it. Um, and that's her primary business at the moment. And also helped her lose over 100 pounds as well. So she got, you know, a double blessing in just that one thing, just learning to say no to people once she realized how much she allowed other people and other things to be the focus instead of just focusing on herself and what she wanted. So everybody round of applause for Amada. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is your mirror work. And I call it mirror work because it's really like looking in the mirror and taking a look at your own reflection. Okay, so these are the questions that you want to write down and answer for yourself, for you and for your business and for your life. Okay, um, one, what are you currently more focused on rather than the success of your business? That's number one. So be very honest with yourself about that. Really take that look in the mirror. What are you more focused on that rather than the success of your business? All right. And then secondly, what are you committed to focusing on in your business within the next 90 days? Now, this does not have to be, you know, a miracle fly by night, get rich overnight type goal, right? What are you committed to doing in the next 90 days and i was just speaking to one of my power player later ladies on wednesday um not wednesday this is wednesday i'm sorry on monday and um she actually wants to open up a bed and breakfast and she was very upset with herself because she said i have this task list and you know i haven't done anything on the list and the last time we spoke was about 30 40 days ago that was the last time we spoke about her goal, right? And I told her, I said, you know what? I think that you are getting overwhelmed because you are focusing on so many things. And when we focus on a lot of things at once, usually we don't get anything done, right? So you don't need to have a whole list of things that you want to focus on your business. Pick one thing. What First, what is the very first thing that you have to do? What is the very first thing that you have to do in order to move you to the goal that you really want? So in her case, it was a dream building stage. She just needed to look around and see where she wanted to put her bed and breakfast. That's the very next thing she felt that she needed to do. Where is she going to look? You know, where is it going to be located, right? And, you know, she could do that on Craigslist. She could do that on Zillow. She could go around, you know, in the area and just look around. However that looks, but that's one clear goal that she can start with. And you can do that too. Do not overwhelm yourself because that will 
truncate your success and make you feel like you're not moving as fast as you need to. Can your 90 day goal comprise of maybe three goals over 30 days that will kind of build on each other? Absolutely. Absolutely. As long as it's not like, because the, the young lady that I'm talking about right now, like she had a literal list of way too many things and she was driving herself crazy because she knew she didn't complete anything. And that was already 40 days, you know, but, and it was because she had so many. So that is actually a good way to frame it as well. You know, if you choose one for each of the 30 days and make those your, your, um, check-in point. So by 30 days, if I have, you know, figured out where I want to have my bed and breakfast, for instance, in that case, you know, the next 30 day goal is okay. Now I will contact people in that area, you know, to figure out what their needs are. Maybe that's the next thing. Okay. So that's, that's the way I would do it. It would have to be, what is the very next step after that? Right. What is the next thing I do after that? Once I've done this, what is the very next thing? You know, what do they always say to you? Right. You can't. What's the best way to eat an elephant? <laughs> like one bite at a time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, while you may have a bigger goal in mind, most of the time it will not serve you unless you can, you know, eat, see, I say eat the baby steps. Lord. <laughs> you can see, you know, within the, the periphery of that next baby step. And you keep taking that baby step, taking that baby step until you find that you have reached your goal or you are fur much further along in your goal than you were 90 days before that. Okay, so mistake number two, the countdown continues. Okay, so mistake number two is lying to yourself. And I know you see the way I spelled lying. I, ha I will tell you, I did graduate from Cornell and I have a master's in elementary education. And Dwayne went to Cornell too, so just watch you. I know, I, I, I love, oh, that's like my dream place to go to for four years. Only went for a summer, but it was great. <laughs> But she was there and that all that's all that matters. But I say that to say I do know how to spell lying. And I that is not a typo. And I would like for you to write that down exactly that way. Okay. Because when we're talking about lying with the power player in the power players club, you know, we have a very special meaning for lying. It's not really about telling a fib, right? It actually has a meaning. Right. And I'm going to share with you that meaning in a second. But really, the mistake in and of itself is believing your own stories about why you can't make more money in your business or be a blessing to the people whose lives you are here to serve. OK, that's really what it is in a, nuts, in a nutshell. Right. You believe in your own stories and those stories are those lies. And you can go on. And but the lie itself. Well, our special meaning for it right, is based on our first power principle, which is perception is key. And the lie is the limited interpretation of everything, right? So see, see, see what I did there? I like that. Yeah, I really do like that. <laughs> but this is, this is how you remember this, right? Because really, it is a lie. Imagine that everything that you ever thought, everything that you've ever created in your head let's say whether it's from experiences whether it's something that you you've come up with on your own uh, whether it's something somebody taught you all of those things are simply somebody's including yours interpretation of that thing and it is limited therefore it really is a lie because it's not true it's not true. And if you don't get anything else out of what we're talking about tonight, I want you to be clear that that is the most powerful thing that you could ever remember and understand, right? They are not true. Nothing is true, right? And why is it not true? Because it's not the same for everyone. If it was the truth, then it would be the same for everyone across the board. But 
there it's not right everybody has different interpretations we could all be watching the same movie reading the same book taking the same class creating the same type of business right and get completely different results so you have to know that the results are based on the way that you see it it's not based on what is what it really is so therefore it is not true and you knowing that is going to give you so much power in your business and in your life because you get to create it and that's what this is all about you can go <clears throat> so why do you need to know this because we live in a world of blaming and complaining right people complain and blame the economy for why their business isn't working you know it's because of my job it's because people aren't looking for what i have they don't have time i don't have time i don't have money they don't have money whatever way you want to deal with it right so all of those things again become the reasons why we are not moving forward in our business right and when you believe the lies that you tell about why you can't be a blessing in your in your given field you become complacent and it breeds procrastination this is how this happens right the only reason why we procrastinate on things is because our passion is no longer motivating us to move forward right the things that we are blaming and complaining about are taking over right and they're pumping their their gas all through your head and next thing you know you're still sitting there and doing absolutely nothing right so that's that's how that happens believing those lies that you tell yourself right and you are bound by your beliefs in life right you are bound by them there is nothing and and this resonates from what we just talked about there's nothing in your life really that you have created beyond what you truly believe is possible it's just not going to happen Okay. You guys know, you probably do know this, right? When when people win the lottery, I've not ever won the lottery. Well, yesterday I won fifty dollars before. I won fifty dollars before. Okay. You, I don't play the lottery, and here's the reason for the same reason, right? I don't believe I'm going to win. So I already know how this all works, and it would not be smart of me or wise of me to use my money that way because I don't even believe I'm going to win. So chances are i'm not gonna win a lot and i don't usually so i don't play see it's a it's a repetitive cycle right but i did win fifty dollars but the point is when some people do win fifty dollars i mean win the lottery and win a lot of money you know that within five years they tend to lose the money and go right back to where they were right and that's because the where their belief system is and where they believe that they should be in life is exactly where they go back to. So you might even have it for a little while. Some of you may have had great success in your business early on. It may have gone that way, right? And because you have a certain belief about who you are and what you are capable of doing or what's for you, what you're worthy of, right? You will get to that point and slide all the way back down, right? And then get back to that point and slide all the way back down. So there's no consistency or, or build up. That's another way that, that that shows up, right? So there's so many ways and all of that comes from believing those limited interpretations of who you are or limited interpretation of the money that you're allowed to make because of who you are, right? And listen, none of us are immune to it. I will tell you guys, I'll be very candid with you and tell you that that's something that I have even dealt with myself and I have to constantly check myself. So this is not, you know, something that goes away. These are just tools I'm giving you so that you have the power to check yourself and reroute so that you can stay on course to what you're doing. Right. So I personally have this thing that happens in my head and I hear it. And remember I told you before, listen to what's, what's happening, whether it's coming out of your mouth or you hear it silently, but in your head is very eye opening right because when i start making a lot of money in my business i literally hear myself saying stop that's enough like i hear it very clearly and in that moment i have to stop and reroute myself and i'm like why why do i say that like no reboot 
reboot, start typing something different in that computer because why am I stopping? Why am I saying that's enough? So that is a limited interpretation that I have about money, right? And I hear it coming up and that's something that I constantly work on. Like I said, that's the work that has to be done, paying attention to that, right? And dealing with it, not just saying I'm going to make a certain amount of money in my business and that's that, right? You know, I can't do that without cleaning up that stuff, you know? And so me dealing with that now over time has me also being willing to take some of that money and start making the investments that I've wanted to make. I made my first big investment on June 1st. That was very exciting for me wow. right? because I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that because I know an investment is supposed to grow. That means it's going to be more money, of which I like to say stop, right? And I was like, that's not going to stop me this time, right? I'm going to do what someone who is wealthy does. And I'm going to keep doing those things. When I hear myself saying stop, that's when I'm going to recognize it, tell it to go take a chill pill in the back seat and do what it is that I need to do. But if you don't do that work, it's going to always elude you because you won't even hear it. You're not even paying attention to it. So that's what I want you guys to do. Okay. And um, Cynthia is another one of our power players from the beginning. She is also our high school friend. Yes, she is. <laughs> So, you know, she's ride or die from the beginning, you know, but um, in her case, um, the first time that she used the, the lie model that I'm going to share with you guys in a minute um, was not about her business. And she's like an entrepreneur's entrepreneur. She does a, a lot of different things also. But, you know, she had some lies that she was telling about her father. So for some of you, it may be people in your family, people in your life, right? who you have interpretations of that stop you from having the most powerful relationship you could with that person. Right. And so in her case, you know, she says she started to examine the lies that she had about her dad. Right. And came to some conclusions. And when she did that, she was able to have real conversations about things with him and then laugh at the end. Right. And he was then able to offer her help and advice without judgment which is a very powerful thing, right? Because a lot of times we think other people have to change for us to be, you know, for us to do right by them, right? Well, well she needs to stop doing this. If she wants me to do this, then she got to stop, you know, all of that, right? No, she changed. It was just her perception. She changed. And when she changed the way she saw things, she started to do things differently. She started to be different around her dad. And then he started to do the same thing in kind. That is a whole nother conversation. I have a whole thing, uh, ladies, called the Richer Relationship Challenge. And that's how we utilize the same principle in the space of the relationships that we create with people. Because it's very important, right? We have so many severed relationships with people, even in business, right? But especially in our personal lives, because we don't take the time to say, well, let me really see how I am looking at this person and what are the ways I can change how I see this person so I can get a better result, right? So let me give you this very quickly and you guys might want to take a screenshot of this. The next slide. Yes. All right. right. You can take a screenshot of this because this is called the lie detector test. And the lie detector test is a very powerful tool that we use in the Power Players Club. We just had our first retreat and the whole retreat was based around um, utilizing this, this test, right? To move all of our Power Players further in what it is that they wanna create in their business and in their life, right? So if you can take a picture, uh, take a snippet, screenshot, anything like that so you can have this, this is the beginning of this tool. This is not the whole thing, um, but this is the part that you need to get started, okay? And the lie detector test basically helps you to explore the lies that you tell about whatever, fill in the blank, right? Okay, so in this case, since we were talking about money, that's the example that we're talking about right here. So uh, the lie I tell about acquiring money is that it's not easy to come by. That's you listening to what's coming out of your mouth or what's coming up in your head, right? And people don't wanna spend money nowadays. 
right? So you write that down right there, right? And then you figure out what believing that lie makes you feel like and what it has you doing or being in life. So believing that lie leaves me not in action, helpless, and feeling like giving up, okay? So really come face to face with it, right? You have to write it out and you have to deal with it in order for it to start to go away, all right? So really see what it is doing you. What is it costing you, right, to believe that lie? What is it really costing you, okay? And then the third thing is to figure out some other ways that you can look at it that are more powerful for you. Because that's the key. Because again, it is a limited interpretation, right? Which means that there are other ways and there are other people that think something completely different and get different results. So now you're going to start exploring that. And you can talk to other people and have them help you if you can't come up with something on your own. Sometimes you're so deep in it that you really can't come up with anything else on your own. So ask somebody else, right, what their thoughts are. And then you can write that down. When something resonates with you, write that down. Try to get two, okay? So the example is another way I can look at acquiring money is that it's easy to get when I'm doing what I love. I love that one because that is absolutely true. Or that people, well, well, it's not true. It's just a lie that works. Let's put it that way. <laughs> right? It is because look, lie, like I said, lie is not, not a mistruth. It's just a limited interpretation. And that is another interpretation, but that one happens to work. So you have a lot of lies in your life that, that absolutely work for you. Do not change them. But when you find that is something that's stopping you from having what you want, that's when you really want to go and examine it and make some changes. So like I said, another way of looking and acquiring um, the money is that it's easy to get when I'm doing what I love or that people will spend money with me because I provide amazing value. Like, why wouldn't they? If my value is amazing, why wouldn't somebody want to pay me for what I'm worth? Don't you pay other people for things? You don't go in the store and say, well, you know what? I really want that, that sewing machine so that I can make clothes, but I don't want to pay for it. So, yeah. The other thing that people need to believe or actually they need to not limit their interpretation of is their actual value. Because I hear people when they're ready to pitch the cost of a service, their entire persona changes. And that already mm -hmm. leads me to believe that they don't believe that they're offering a great service for what they're asking for. They're already stressed yeah. out about the cost. But if you believe that you're offering that value and it's worth it, then throughout your entire, you know, pre-pitch and the pitch, it should be consistent. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you said that, Duena, because um, for you ladies that are listening, very important, right? Use this for how you believe your about what you believe about yourself, because that's what what Dwayne is talking about okay? and you can put that in there just go back up to the top and the lie I tell about myself is that yeah okay I am I am I don't provide I don't provide value or nobody is going to believe me nobody is going to you know want to hear what I have to say whatever it is that comes up for you you have to be completely vulnerable in this process for it to work right allow it to do its job right because believing that lie leaves you what? How do, what does it cost you? You know, it leaves you not giving the value that you, that you really have, not serving people that are, are waiting for you. There are people on this planet that are only waiting for you. They can't hear it from anybody else. Never mind that, you know, there's other people that do what you do. They will not hear it unless it comes out of your mouth. And this is the cost. You not feeling like you're worthy enough. You not feeling like, like what you have is important and, and something that can be given to other people to help uplift them. That leaves them being disempowered because they're waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Simple as that, right? So that's what I want you guys to work on. Um, I think I saw, Duane, you said you will take a screenshot and send it? Yes, I'll send a follow-up email with, to everyone afterwards, not only with the link of where they can re-watch this, 
but I'll also send any offers that Dre may have as well as a screenshot from that particular slide. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right, and now we are at mistake number one, the number one thing, drum roll please. please. <laughs> okay, if I can only make it come out, there we go. <laughs> that is a fear of flying. Okay, and what do I mean by that? Being afraid to step out of your own comfort zone. That is one of the biggest mistakes that we make. Just being comfortable. And comfortable could mean you already have a multi-million dollar business. But if you were trying to get to the next level, but you're okay where you're at, then where are you going? Why, why say that you want to move forward in your business when you're comfortable? Even if you're comfortable in your job, some people, you know what? It's all right if you love your job. It is okay. And if you have a good pension and you even almost ready to retire, just stay at your job. Girl, nobody telling you not to leave your job if that's what you want to do. Okay? Right? You can have a business and have a job at the same time. But don't let that job stop you from doing what it is that you know that you should be doing. Right? Staying in the comfort zone. I hope you guys are realizing that all of these mistakes, they kind of circle and dwell in and out of each other, right? All of them really are about not stepping out of your comfort zone and doing something different. So if you do want to grow your business and start making money, you definitely have to remove yourself from where you're comfortable and start doing something different. And I know that's easier said than done, but this is what we're talking about right now. All right. So what does it look like, right? To-do lists that never get done. Wait, I got to go back. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm back. That's all right. Oh, now I don't know how to do this in this software. One second. I saw something down on the bottom when you were doing it before. It had to go. Yeah. All right. So um, like I was saying, to-do to lists that never get done. By the way, I hate to-do lists. I do not like to-do lists. And the only reason why I don't like to-do lists, similar to like I, I mentioned with the young lady earlier, is to-do lists, when you are overwhelmed, you don't do anything. You just got a list of things to do. But sometimes but, isn't it good to get it out of your head and put it on paper so that you don't think about it over and over? Yes, but here's what and this is this is really where there's a, a reframe here right a to-do list to me is like things that you're like okay these are just things that and usually they're things that other people told you that you're supposed to do and especially as it's related to your business yeah i gotta do this do this do this do this do this do this where do i even start right and this is why i said just focus on that next thing that one next thing that one next thing Right? Because other to-do lists, like, all right, if you got chores, all right, you got to write those down because, right? And the other thing is, if your list is, is inspired, that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if it came from your own soul, if it said, oh my God, I got to do, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go look and find like places where I'm gonna have my bed and breakfast. Cool. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna interview these people. After that, I'm gonna do, you know, like if it's coming from, from generating out of your spirit, like, yes, I'm on the right track. This is what I'm supposed to do. Yes. You better start writing them things down. Cause you're going to forget. Right. But that's different than, okay. I was watching this network marketer and he told me to do all of these things. They didn't come from you. They were not born from you. And so a lot of times you look at it and you're like, well, I don't even know how I'm going to do that. What's the first thing I'm supposed to do? I don't know how to make an autoresponder, what? And the next thing you know, you don't talk yourself out of doing anything. But you got a list, though. <laughs> you see? <laughs> so that's what I mean. So if it's an inspired list and it's like, this is what I need to do next, right? That autoresponder might come up. You might be like, oh, I need a way to, you know, tell all these people. But that's one thing out of somebody else's list, as opposed to all those things that half of them probably don't apply to you or you don't need. Because I'll tell you one thing that I have learned in, in um, operating my business like this. It's like being in the flow. You don't need everything that everybody tells you. You need some things from some, some places. Some things you're going to 
need that you got from hearing somebody outside say. <laughs> that has nothing to do with somebody, a network marketer that you were listening to on a webinar, right? Or listening to me right now, then you hang up from here and somebody's going to say something on a TV show that's going to inspire you, right? So you, you have to really feel for what makes sense for your business because there's no right way or wrong way to do anything. It's going to be the way that is for you. And you have to be um, centered enough and in alignment enough. This is why we're talking about that before for you to recognize when you're hearing what is yours, right? Good example of that, totally unrelated to business, but still related to having what you want, right? Um, my apartment, okay, guys, I live in, in New York, so you know it's expensive. I pay too much money for rent. And I said to myself, I need to have my own something, whether it's a house, co-op, condo, I don't care. If I'm going to spend this much money, I need it needs to be an investment at this point. It's simple as that. Now, did I go buy every book and every course about buying a house? No, I did not do that. I just started aligning myself with that's, that's what I want. Because remember I told you before, I was like, I don't need no investments. Well, not even that I don't need them, but I didn't believe that I should have them. I'm always saying, you know, no, right? And getting out of that, cleaning that out. And just now I said that, and I kid you not, within a week, one of my friends was like, oh, my mom just got this house through this program. And now, you know, we have to just decide when we're going to move. I was like, what? She was like, yeah, it's called NACA. You guys might have that too. I'm not sure. But, you know, okay. But it's it's basically a program for first home, home buyers. Home buyers. Right. I think we call it something different. Like, there are a couple of options here, but I get where, yeah. Right. It's that. Let's just say it, it's that. But the point is, she said that. I looked it up the next day. The workshop was this past week. And that was the only time that they were over here in my area doing a full workshop where I was able to do the workshop, go to the counselor and do the approval in the same weekend. They said, if you have to go to the office by itself um, and just go to the office and go through, it takes months. And I just did that all in one weekend just because cleaning out that stuff, no to-do list of things that whatever. I just was knowing that that's what needs to happen and that this was going to be my last winter in this house. Book a crook. I didn't know how it was going to happen. And that was the way that, that it happened. And so she already gave me a, a pre-approval. I know exactly how much money I qualify for. And I could start looking in areas in, in Brooklyn. That's where I plan to stay. Right. And no, I didn't even spend money on a course about how to do that. What happened, right? So that was, that's my point about that's why I don't like to-do lists. They, okay, you know, they serve their purpose, but that's not, that's not, if it's not inspired, it doesn't, it really works. Let's put it that way, all right? But also, this looks like ideas that never get born. By the way, you know, I went on a tangent, I'm sorry. So we're talking about stepping out of your comfort zone, right? So to-do lists that never get done, ideas that never get born, right? Resources that never get used and dreams that never come true. That's really what it comes down to. That's what it looks like. Okay. So you might be asking yourself, why can't I just be me? Why can't I just be the person I am right now? And that is because habits of being right that have kept you stuck both in your life in your and in your business are going to be the same habits that are going to keep you there right because your ego is there to ensure your survival so it doesn't usually go off course it usually keeps you doing exactly what you know you've been doing right and so that's what habits are right and you have to break habits and it may not be comfortable right? But all those are, you are just a conglomeration of the habits that you have kept over time, right? They are not who you are. They're just what you've been doing and who you've been being all this time, right? So that's why, no, you can't just be yourself because yourself is the one that's stuck right where you're at. So that's not who you want to be, okay? Right? And also, we believe that we are the way that we are, and that's just the way that it is. And that is not 
<laughs> the truth. That is a lie that does not work. <laughs> Let's put it that way, right? That's not true, right? None of us are the way we are, and that's just the way it is. We get to decide who we are, right? There was a time, and Duane, can attest to this because of how long we've been friends. I was extremely shy. I did not like to talk to anybody. <laughs> and I would be, I could hyperventilate. So I don't know how I managed to be the valedictorian and, and the president. Like speech, right? <laughs> And then have to talk in front of people. Do you know how many people were in that audience? You don't know. I thought that my heart was going to just fall out. I thought I was going to pass away. I'm so serious. I thought that. But that's not the point. The point is, that's who I was at that time. Because I, I was very shy. But it was because I believed, like I said, about myself that nobody would care about what I have to say. I just held that belief that what I had to say was not important. And so to go stand up in front of somebody now and say things that I already think they're not going to think is important, come on. That produces, right, that, that heart palpitation and all of that, right? But I made a choice somewhere in my 20s. This is when I started to learn, you know, what really moves you right? The same things I'm talking to you about right now. And I had to make a choice. I said, that's not who I am. My words do have power. And when I speak, people listen. That had to be my mantra. That's what I had to reprogram myself to start to believe. And then that became the way that I am. So there is no way that you are. There's just the way that you've been being. And that is very powerful because that lets you know you can change it. You can be anybody you want to be, right? And be that which serves you. It's as simple as that. <clears throat> okay. Oh, I didn't even know that was over there. All right. But I said that already, right? You can't have the business you want being the person that you are right now. Because that's the person that's sitting on this, on this webinar. This is why we're here. So, no, we can't be that person. We love you. You love you. We're going to move forward and be a better version of this person. Okay? So last but not least, let's meet Tammy, because Tammy is a product of what we're talking about right now. She is one of our power player ladies who was working on her CD project for over two years. She went to a workshop that we had one day, one day, and we were talking about how to access those different ways that you can be and choose to be in your life, right? Within two weeks, she finished it. She finished the CD published a CD, invited the community to her CD project release on her birthday. And that's the, the, the picture. That's the picture of the, of the CD. They go to um, CD down there on the bottom. Also forgot that was down there. But all of that happened within two weeks of her going to the workshop when she was sitting on that for two years. And now that's something that she makes money from every time she goes. She's a storyteller, by the way. So she goes around and she, you know, tells stories. That's what she does, right? And so, but now she has that to bring with her and to market herself, which she didn't even have it. She, two years. Wow. You know, but in two weeks she got that done because she realized that who she was being all this time was not serving her. And she decided to make a change with that. And that's what she, that's what she did. So round of applause to Tammy. <laughs> Wow. She had all that inside of her for two years, for two years, able to put it all out in two weeks. And we all know to put together any kind of album or record, it takes time. So yeah, wow. that is powerful. Exactly. So this is your mirror work and this is your last and final mirror work, right? Which is to face the mirror monster, right? And I got this, this little snippet from the Fairy Godmother's Guide to Getting What You Want, okay? And um, this is actually the basis for that workshop. That's what made me create that workshop that I was just talking about, right? Um, but in this book, the, the woman, I can't see her name down there anymore, so I forgot. Donna McCallum. Thank you. <laughs> I can't see what it is. Um, she was talking about how we all have, you know, these monsters, right? So, yes, that, that's her way of, of saying it, but we're talking about the same way right? These monsters that run our lives because, you know, they take over and then they want to run the show and they don't give us the results that we really want, right? Nancy the nice monster, Ivan the important monster, right? 
Norbert and Nordy Monster. You guys get the idea, right? So what I want you guys to do, you can go to the next. But what I want you guys to do with that particular um, thing is identify the monsters that are running your life right now and choose and you can make up names for them because everybody in that workshop made up names for, for them, right? I forgot what, what Tammy's was, but it was something like Cora Gets It Done, something like that. That, that, was, her, that was her name. So I'm like, I'm going to ask her what it was. I forgot. But that's, that was the gist of it. So you identify your own monsters and come up with one that is going to empower you using all of the tools that we did right now. And then start using those to move you forward in your business. And it'll be a lot more fun because, you know, no to-do lists and blah, blah, blah. Hmm. And <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, all right. You know how I feel about those right now. Yes. <laughs> but we want it to be fun and we want it to be exciting and empowering and inspiring for you. And if you use those tips that I gave you, you know, you have to practice with them, of course, but you know, once you get really good at them and you start to use them and let them infuse your life, it will be so much easier for you to move forward, right? Because at the end of the day, that is what you need to move your business, right? It, it starts inside of you. Everybody says that, but it's really true, right? It starts inside of you. So if we don't work on the things that are inside of us that have been keeping us stuck, it's not going to get any easier. So that's what I want you guys to do. And because you guys all stayed on to the end, I do have a free gift for you. Um, and it's kind of the next step of what we were talking about, right? Because I know you guys are all passionate um, entrepreneurs. I was going to say powerpreneurs, but that's pretty. <laughs> yes, powerpreneurs. That is it, right? Absolutely. Yes. But, and I know you are, because otherwise you wouldn't be here. So, the gift that I want to give you for being on with us tonight is money and success secrets to power up your passion, right? And in some ways, it's going to reiterate some of the points that we already spoke about, and then it's going to give you a little bit more to move you forward and to continue the conversation for you so that you can really get your mind right, right? And that is what the point of all of this really is, right? Get in your mind right so that you can easily step into your own power and be the entrepreneur, the mother, the daughter, the sister, the wife, the girlfriend, you know, whatever it is, whoever you are, right? So that you can powerfully be those people, okay, in your life. So if you would like to get that free gift, I invite all of you, you can just go to www.thepowerplayersclub.com um, slash money and success. Okay. I have typed the link in the chat box, but I'll also send that in the email. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Um, and then um, what you can do, if you are interested in following up and sharing with me what you have accomplished, because I would love to hear it. I always love to hear it. Um, you can actually, if you go on the Power Players Club site and you are on there um, getting that, you can actually find the contact little box. You can just type to me and tell me um, what's going on with you. Or when I send you that information, you can respond to it and just let me know how it's going for you because I'm excited to hear it. That is excellent. I hope I wrote down quite a bit of notes here. <laughs> and my big takeaway really is not to, it's, it's the lie, the limiting, the limited interpretations of everything. That is very powerful. And then I also wrote about, you know, thoughts and words and actions. So I need to really start thinking about those things because, you know, we might say one thing, but we're thinking another, and then that will really lead to that negative action. So I really, right. really enjoyed this. So a yeah. couple of things. What do you have coming up, Dre? I don't know if you want to do a meet and greet when you get to Toronto. Everyone, she is coming to Toronto. <laughs> am coming to Toronto. Okay. If all of you guys are very close, somewhere around nine o'clock on every day that I'm there, right? <laughs> We're going to be hanging out. So you guys are more than welcome. That would be exciting to meet you guys in person. Um, I'm actually going to be there from June 14th to the 18th, I believe. 
tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure. It's- uh, I think you're right. Yes. From the Wednesday to the Sunday, something like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, cause I'm going to, I'm going home actually on the 18th. So let's not count that. Okay. Let's not count that. <laughs> so, um, feel free, you know, shoot a message over to Duenia or, you know, go on the power players club site, shoot me a, a message, find me on Facebook. You can find me a lot of different ways, but tell us, Hey, we want to hang out. Let's go. We, we can be hanging out. That's it. It'll be a great meet and greet. So anything else you have coming up? Uh, I will definitely direct everyone to the website, but if there's anything you have coming up, let me know and I will push it out there. And everyone, the one thing we do have coming up is tomorrow's election day. Voting is important. So please, if you did not do early voting, get out there and vote tomorrow and also check to see where there you know, are extended times for the voting for the polls, they're open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., but I do believe there are some extended hours. But make sure, because it's a big deal for this election, your vote really does count. (laughs) So enough of us. I will definitely follow up about things that we have going on. We do have a free event next week. If you're in the Mississauga area, we're having a breakfast with the BDC, which is Business Development Bank of Canada, And you can learn about financing for your business if you need seed money for any particular thing. It is limited to about 25 people. Please do go on our Facebook page and get the registration information if you are interested in attending. I believe right now we only have five spots left. And then after that, we do have a blood drive coming up in July because I've always wanted to do a blood donor drive. And then we have a few events coming up for the rest of the year, but you can always find out about that because we have another webinar in a couple weeks anyway. But thank you so much, Dre. I can't wait to see you. (laughs) It's been only a couple years this time. It's not like, you know, a 12 year stretch. So thank you so much. Thank you everyone for getting on this uh, lovely webinar. And I will follow up with an email with the links and how to rewatch and everything by the latest, the end of the night tomorrow. All right. Have a good night. Bye.